What's up, guys? So I'm Jordan Laster, and I have been doing jujitsu for a little under two years now, and my focus is mainly on no gi, although my first six months I started in the gi. And this was actually my first jujitsu competition, but a little more context, I wrestled for half of my life, started in middle school, wrestled all the way through at Princeton University, uh, which is a D1 school. So I had su some success in wrestling. I uh, was a three-time national qualifier, had 100 wins, and unfortunately lost in the blood round. So I lost the match to All-American. Um, but never quite hit my goals. But here we are with jiu-jitsu, using what we learned from wrestling to kick butt on the mats here. So this was my first competition in November of 2023. And I entered the Nogi Absolute, or Open Division, where basically there are no weight classes. Uh, it's all belts, all skill levels. And I was like, why not? You know, with the wrestling, it's it's a huge advantage. So gave that a shot. This was my very first match against a guy who was probably about a foot taller than me. And I would guess 220, 230 pounds. Um, so... It was a very interesting match and interesting to see how wrestling can apply in jiu-jitsu to bigger guys because in wrestling, we usually don't go against guys who are, you know, much bigger than us because it's just a, a lot harder to, to take them down. But in jiu-jitsu, where guys aren't as good as wrestling or at wrestling, um, wrestling can still be an advantage. So let's dive into this one. I'll give you guys some takeaways I had, some things to look out for when you're wrestling in jiu-jitsu, some things you probably shouldn't do and all other sorts of stuff. So right away, I absolutely love the sweep single for jujitsu against bigger guys, or even if I were to wrestle a guy who's a little bigger than me, because there's nothing worse than taking a shot straight on, having a big guy sprawl on you, and just having your shoulders get destroyed. And then you also have all that weight pinned on top of you and on your neck. So that's no fun. So the sweep single allows you to sweep around, get to the outside. As you can see right here, I'm outside. I have him on his hand. And now I can keep all his weight on his hand and just focus on keeping this leg, finishing the takedown, or taking the back if he just turns down. So as you see here, especially in jiu-jitsu, people tend to be a little more willing to just turn down since um, wrestling defense isn't as prevalent. One thing I do want to point out is in wrestling, we do have a top position where you tend to have your knee behind the guy's butt. That way you can drive the knee into him which puts all the weight on his hands and helps you flatten them out. Now, in jiu-jitsu, this isn't really the best idea because guys can turtle up here. They don't need to really do much or try to stand up and escape like we do in wrestling. And also, by having my leg back here, this allows him to, at some point, roll and try to enter my legs. And that's where we get into the leg lock position, heel hooks, all that sort of stuff. So... This is a big no-no in my opinion, just to be hanging out back here with my leg here. I'm basically <laughs> just asking him to leg lock me, or at least enter the legs. Nice. So you see it right there, he was already looking for it. I had a feeling it was coming, but against someone who might be a little bit better at that, you know, I'm, I'm just inviting that. The pressure. Look for a hook story when you can. So at this point, I somewhat knew the rules. I knew I had to get two hooks in to get points, not just one. And what's actually super interesting is I had no idea when I was actually scoring points or not. You'll notice the ref doesn't really say anything. They just put up their hands for the table to take note of the score. So I'm scoring all these points, and I have zero clue. So I scored from the takedown. I scored from getting my hooks in. 
Um, I do think it's kind of silly that people can just turtle up and you get no points for any of that. But I guess I did get a, a, get points for the takedown. So there's this. Um, one thing I do want to note is, especially in this match, I was very conservative. And I wanted to kind of feel out my first match. So instead of really hunting the sub here, I'm kind of just maintaining control and um, not really trying to go for the kill here, which I wish I did. But that's kind of what's going on in this match. Another big point here is, and I remember thinking this, is the last thing I want to have happen in a match against a bigger guy is have him end up on top of me when I have the hooks in. So you have to be really smart and aware that, you know, hey, this guy's really starting to get out here. The last thing I want is for him to explode, end up on top. So you should be cautious and be ready to bail and just get back to a top position where you still have control. I think I've seen a lot of, of guys just rolling in the room and, and at other gyms. A lot of times they'll kind of hang on too long and give up the control seeking a submission when really they should keep the control so that they can live to go for another submission. If you guys have wrestled, like this is, this is literally the starting <laughs> wrestling position. It's just it's ridiculous. I'm just doing a wrestling match here. Coach, please. So right here, remember what I said earlier in this match, that if you keep your leg behind them, like a, a wrestling top position, they can roll in and catch your leg. This is exactly what happened right here. So my leg was behind him, my knees behind his butt. He just rolls and catches my leg. Now look, this is the absolute worst position. Like when I'm thinking, when I think about my top fear, of jujitsu competition, it's this. Like, my leg is captured. This guy can start looking heel hooks, all sorts of damaging stuff. Now, I wouldn't say I'm, like, super skilled in leg lock defense, but one thing I did know is that I wanted to keep my foot on the mat flat as much as possible to avoid keeping my heel up for him to heel hook and that when the opportunity arises I wanted to back heel here so you notice how my knee is on like a 90 degree angle here back heel I caught my foot with the other hand so that he couldn't extend my leg out anymore and then apply subtle but relentless pressure forward so that I could start to get this leg back <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is literally a wrestling <laughs> lineup on top. I think I knew better during this match, too, but 
sometimes you just, you know, it's just a force of habit. Another key thing to, to point out here is when you guys wrestle in jiu-jitsu or wrestling either sport, another huge piece is to control the center of the mat. So notice I'm here in the center. I'm nice and low in my stance. I know jiu-jitsu, you can be a little bit higher unless you go against a good wrestler. And I dictate the pace here. So you're going to see a lot of fakes, things to get this guy off balance because when he's off balance, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to be too busy worrying about what you're doing to attack you, or he will try to attack you with some sort of leg attack or something, and it's going to be sloppy because he's just off balance and he doesn't know what you're going to do. And that's when you can capitalize and defend and go around. Or if you have him very off balance with your fakes and things, you can use that to then set up your leg attacks. Notice how even when I do lose the center of the mat, I circle back in to the middle of the mat because you don't want to – there's a whole thing about if you control the center of the mat, it shows you're the aggressor, you're the one pushing the pace, you're the one who's not trying to go out of bounds. And let's say this match were to go to judge's decision or something like that, it all plays a part. It's all a part of the, the show of the match. <laughs> So again, this this was actually, I went out for sweep single, but the way he reacted opened up the side, on, his, the opening on the left side, so I was able to pop my head out and just go straight to a double. So sometimes you can use that sweep single to initially go outside, but if they react a certain way, you can just cut back the other way. So you're going to notice here now I stopped putting my leg behind him because pain is the best lesson. I didn't get hurt earlier in the match when he went for my legs, but I didn't want to risk getting hurt with leg locks and things like that since my defense wasn't the greatest then. It is definitely a little bit better now. But to avoid that, I just stayed out to the side, and I do have a whole series I do here where I basically collect the near wrist and the far wrist, lean to my right shoulder, and then I'm able to take the back, but I, I saw no need to do that since this is a bigger guy, it's my first match, and in the open division, there are literally no breaks, so you have matches like every two minutes, <laughs> like two minutes after you're done with one match, so I was kind of conserving energy here, but notice how I'm staying out to the side, and I'm no longer hanging out behind him. And what's also great about having good wrestling is you can just disengage. If you know you can take a guy down at will or whenever you want to or you have confidence on your feet, you're not going to think, dang, I got to keep this on the ground or I'm screwed. It's like, nah, I'm just going to let this guy up. I got nothing here. Maybe I can get back on my feet, take him down, and get to side control instead of hanging out in turtle. Thanks, please. Another key thing is notice how the second I let him go, he shot for my legs. This is because there was short time, but also when you disengage from someone, 
there's kind of this unwritten rule in jujitsu or wrestling where like if there's a break in action and the ref doesn't stop it, you both kind of like gather your thoughts or collect yourself or do a quick little jump, get out of your stance or something. And there are guys who will take advantage of that. So don't let them. You have to be ready. So notice I disengaged, stayed focused, stayed present, knew he was going to shoot because they're short time and was just ready to sprawl. And then you'll see here, get the go behind. So yeah, that was my first jujitsu match ever. Grappling Industries, Wisconsin Dells, November 2023. It was um, a good first lesson, and now I know not to keep my leg behind in turtle. So that is the big takeaway here. For those of you guys who haven't wrestled, definitely recommend the sweep single against bigger guys. It's not always going to work. You'll see that in some of my matches later on. But it is a lot better than shooting straight on and just getting crushed with the sprawl. So if you guys want to learn more about the sweep singles, I do have a sweep single course that I just released called Mastering the Sweep Single for Jiu-Jitsu. I'll put that in the uh, description for the video so you can go find it there. I'll catch you guys on the next match breakdown. Peace.